hello. Hello, beautiful people. Courtney here from Stars of the Morning Light. So happy to be with you. Um, I know it's been a minute and there's reasons why and I'm about to explain. So about two weeks ago, I was given from the Akashic Records what uh, the weekly vocab and goal was supposed to be and it threw me way off. <laughs> So then I went again and I was like, hey, give me something different. And then they gave me basically the around about the same thing. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay, so then I was trying to put it together. But, you know, I had a lot going on in my life too. Um, between a garage sale and anniversary and just a lot going on. And so I went again because I was, you know, after I do a client, I might ask something for me like, hey, what about this <laughs> weekly goal they gave me again? Pretty much the same scenario. And even last night I was talking to my husband going, I don't know what to do. I'm not putting the dots together. Cause how they work with me with the um, like weekly goals is they'll give me a word and maybe a topic or something or, you know, a story. And I then have to do the research and kind of put the dots together. It's kind of how you would approach um, like adult learners. You give them the information, but they need to really, you know, figure it out for themselves because that's how we learn, you know, especially as adults. Um, and then I can deliver it to you better. Um, well, I was not connecting the dots until this morning. And now this is more urgent. <laughs> than um, I really would like it to be. This is really pertaining to this week, um, March 14th through the 20th, the full moon um, in Pisces, Pluto happening, all this stuff happening, the spring equinox, um, so much is going on. And I know we can all feel the energy dumps, the up level, the up level, the up level, like, can I keep going? Like, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You choose you. Yes, you can. Right? Well, I believe all this was supposed to be in preparation. <laughs> and clearly, I did not really get to connecting the dots until now. So I'm going to try to get this video out today. Uh, I already did a video and it was, I, something was going on. I couldn't get it out. So I'm going to do another one tomorrow and another one Thursday. So I'm hoping this all works out. Uh, this is later in the evening. So if you hear the tiny tapper, which is my dog, going around making noise or people driving by, I apologize. So let's begin. They were giving me words and then they kept repeatedly giving me goddesses. And Greek goddesses, like when I spoke to my husband last night, I was like, I can't figure it out. And he's like, well, I wonder why they keep giving you Greek goddesses and not like native. And I'm thinking, that's not the point. I'm not connecting the dots. I don't know what to do here. They kept giving me different goddesses and maybe a word or a concept. So we're going to start from the first one they gave me a couple of weeks ago. And this is all about perception and time because what they gave me was Artemis the god of the goddess of the hunt Artemis and the word corkscrew so you could tell where I'm like what 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 am I supposed to do with this and they were not backing down it is what I had to present so this has to do with us needing to um, change our perceptions or see things differently or um, letting go of preconceived notions based on our perceptions and also let go of this concept of linear time. Let's go into the goddess. Artemis. She also in Roman, she's Diana. And I, I personally have a very strong relationship with her because she was the first that I was kind of introduced to. 
She is the goddess of the hunt, wild animals, vegetation, chastity. She wanted to stay a virgin her whole life. She, uh, childbirth, uh, young women, mothers. <clears throat> She's also the goddess of the moon. Now there's other goddesses of the moon, right? Uh, Celine was actually the one that she really watched and learned from. She was, Celine was the one that would take the chariot, the glowing chariot across the sky, emphasis the moon. Um, and Artemis learned from her about how to see in the dark. Especially during a hunt, especially when needed to see in the dark. She also is the twin brother of Apollo, um, which is interesting with that story because she was born first and Apollo didn't come until six days later. That is not what we are used to. She was born and was like, hey, mom, I'll help you through the, the next six days, you know, birthing my brother. Completely different concept of time that we know of. So when we talk about perception, so many of us, um, well, all of our perception is, is individual. I think I've talked about this in other videos. This is why, you know, police really should, they can find at least three witnesses because all, let's say there's you, me, and somebody else all seeing the same scenario, the same situation we're all going to see different aspects of it because of our perception of what to hone in on you know you might see the vehicle in the situation when i'm looking at what people are wearing when the other person that witnesses are just only remember the words that were said so all of us have a different perception of things and it's based on all of it, nature, nurture, social, I, it, it's all of it, economic, all of it. Even to um, like kind of like our makeup. I remember I started in high school. I don't know what, you know, made us do this, but all of my girlfriends in at least high school and mostly now, th they're their shoulders came up to my chest. And so, I mean, I was at least, <laughs> I was feet above them, let's say that. And at one point, um, one of them was standing on a chair to do something. I said, hey, come down just a little bit, a little bit you know, like stare me in the eyes. Instead of always looking up at me, stare me in the eyes. And she was like, okay. And then I said, now look around. And I said, that's how I see the world. And she just, she was like, oh my gosh, this is how you see things? I said, yeah. And then I would, I, she got down and she's like, go try out where I, how I see things. So I get up, I get down and I look around and I'm thinking, oh my God, how do you, how do you function? How do you like get things? How do you do anything? You know, but that's, it changes our perceptions. Even something like that, the height that we are. So we all have them. And over some time now, I, I know that the people that are watching this have begun to change their perceptions. The reason they chose this goddess to talk about was because she was very much, um, let's say you could, some would see her as bad and some would see her as really good. And some would see her right down the middle, depending on what mood she was in. And she was neither. She was what she was. She is what she is. 
you know, it's, it's even, you know, who she is, the goddess of, sounds like a, tr a contradiction. She's the goddess of the hunt, but yet she also watches over all the wild, wild animals. Those that she will hunt at some point, but that's because she hunts for a reason. At the same time, she'll care for those animals. She is also the goddess that can heal or bring disease. She is the goddess that um, can bring vegetation or bring, you know, starvation. You know, she can do both. And people would view her either in one light or another light when she was really just what she is. And I know we all understand that personally. But we forget that that's how we have to view the outside world as well. There is no real, there's right or wrong. There's black, there's white. Everything is everything, is energy. And it is what we do with it. Including, because this is all going to be leading into the other goddesses I'm going to have to talk about and this weekend and whatnot including how we use our energy for the greater good but how are we going to know how to use it for the greater good if our perceptions are trying to tell us this is the right way or this is the wrong way and we have no idea which end is up or maybe we do think we know which end is up, and in reality, we don't. We have to be open to letting go of our preconceived notions, our perceptions, how we view the world, how we um, take in information and give information. We have to start changing it up. Hence, why they gave me the word corkscrew yeah that was... so of course we all know what a corkscrew is you know it's what we undo our wine bottles with but when you look up the definition there's another way of looking at it it means to move in the motion of a spiral yeah we didn't know that did we that word can also imply that, to move in the motion of a spiral. So here's the thing. Everything is a spiral. Everything. Everything's connected to each other. Okay, everything's connected through energy. Our, li our lifetimes, our timelines, as you would say, past, present, and future, they're just a spiral. They just move like this. That's all they do. They just move like this. And, you know, so past lives down are still affecting, as we go along the spiral, the lives we've had, the current life. That is how time moves. It is not linear. Um, there's actually real no kind of concept of time, but yet the spiral out of any ancient text the spiral is the best way to utilize this concept of time. I, I don't care if it's the Emerald Tablets. I don't care if it, it doesn't matter. They all talk about the spiral, the corkscrew. So right now, that's a part of this message as well. Not only do we have to kind of look at our perception differently and realize that it was bought, it was based out of all that we know thus far and how we operate in the world. And maybe we have to start seeing things differently, including time. There is no linear time. The, the Emerald Talus even talks about it when Toth starts talking about us moving into different dimensions once we realize we are space born. And let's say you get kind of stuck out in where you shouldn't be. He will say, do not try to go through the spiral. Do not try to zigzag. Do not try to 
do anything. You just run through those spiral. You just run through the spiral to get back to where you need to be. It, he's saying that. So nothing is linear. Nothing is set in stone. Nothing is exactly as you perceive it to be. We have to let go of all this. We, we really do. Like, this is the time right now. I know you're saying, Courtney, you just said there is no such thing. This is the time when all the energies are here presented to help us to learn how to see in the dark. As Artemis talked, you know, a lot of the stories of her being a, a moon goddess, it's about that. Seeing through the dark. And letting go of the perceptions that we learned in our waking life in the light. Maybe we have to start seeing things in the dark to change it up, to get a different, fresh look, a different perspective. And at, and with that, I almost said at the same time, and with that, let go of the control time has on us. It does, doesn't it? It's got a lot of control. We have given it that control. We have our deadlines. We have our anniversaries, like I just had one. We have, we have all this stuff. That's very linear. We have all these things going on. And it's set up that way. And yes, I'm not saying don't pay your bills. I'm not saying don't, you know, hit your dates of when you need to do things. What I'm saying is in the times that you can just sit back and relax and chill. Bring a lot of this concept into you of letting go. And then when you do have to get kind of back into your regular routine, your your day, it won't have that kind of control. You're not going to be stressing about how you owe this or this needs to be done by this or this needs to be done by that because you're the more you spend time changing your perception about time, the less you're going to feel that controlled by it. Because things are going to get done or they don't get done. Things are going to happen or they don't happen. Things are all connected anyways. So you could go to do something and something over here, you know, messes it all up. Or something happens, a blessing comes in way before you thought it would or even knew that it would. Everything's connected. Everything moves in a spiral and we're going right along with it. Nothing's a straight line. There is no end point to this. There is no black or white. There is none of that. We are a neutral spiral of energy. So, they continuously gave me goddesses. So today, tomorrow, and Thursday, hopefully I can get this all done um, because of, you know, rendering. Um, if I can get this all done to you, I want you to really think about this as far as your weekly goals. Tomorrow is actually gonna be about you as the great I am and love. Right now, let's think about some of these perceptions we need to change. Maybe we need to pull back and go, hmm, there might be more to all of this than I'm thinking or knowing or seeing or reading. There might be a lot going on and it's not at all going to be a straight shot because there is no such thing. So, this week is to think and be with yourself and in preparation of allowing these energies to work with you, transform you, transmute you, do all sorts of up leveling. I know it's rough. Keep choosing. Yes, yes, yes. You, 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 you can do it. And 
please, if you have not listened to the Akashic Records reading yet for March, please go and listen to it because at the end of it, it says dance, dance, dance. And that is sure as shit what we need to do definitely this weekend. I love you guys. I love you, love you, love you. And it's good to be back. Next week is when we're going to start the to go deep into cause and effect in relation to the seven deadly sins, all connected to the different uh, levels of consciousness. Oh yeah, it's about to begin. Love you guys. Peace.